This is the third example of graphing rational functions. So we have this time quadratic over linear. Um, we're going to have a special asymptote in this example. So start by drawing all asymptotes. As always, let's start by finding the vertical asymptote. Okay, so here's my work for vertical asymptote. Um, vertical asymptote happens when the denominator is equal to zero. Uh oh, whoopsie. Denominator nator is equal to zero. But I have to stress that if it's also the numerator zero, then it's going to be called a whole. So um, it's, we should probably try to see if we can factor this. Um, can you factor the numerator? Is there a number that, div, uh, that we can multiply to get 4? Well, 4 is either 1 times 4 or 2 times 2, right? Well, you notice they are not going to add up to 10. So that trinomial, whoopsie, let me go ahead and zoom, come down. That trinomial is not factorable in the numerator. So we're not going to have a hole here, okay? because they will not have a common factor, okay? So just set the denominator equal to zero to find the vertical asymptote. So the denominator, the bottom of the fraction is 2x plus 4. So let's set this equal to zero and solve for x. Subtract 4 from both sides, x, 2x is negative 4. Divide both sides by 2, x is negative 2. I'll circle this. And I'll go ahead and use a red highlighter and draw a vertical line, a dotted line, at x equals negative 2, okay? We're good with the vertical asymptote. Now let's talk about the horizontal asymptote, okay? Horizontal asymptote. In order to talk about the horizontal, to find the horizontal asymptote, we must look at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. So what I'm doing is I'm copying down the function so that we can look at these. All right, take a look. The degree of the numerator is 2. The degree of the denominator is 1. Uh-oh. When n is greater than m, when the degree of the numerator is bigger than m, remember the case? This was the second case, uh, or the first case. Um, this has no horizontal asymptote. If the degree of the numerator is bigger, we're not going to have a horizontal asymptote. But guess what we're going to have this time? Notice that the degree... Oh, let me, you know what, let me go ahead and write this down. Because... n is greater than n is greater than m by exactly 1 f has this function has slant asymptote So we will find it in this example. Take a look. The two highlighted numbers. 2 is bigger than 1 by exactly 1, right? So if that happens, then we're going to have a slant asymptote. So to find the slant asymptote, find the quotient. So I'm going to do the long division here, okay? If I divide x squared plus 10x plus 4 by... 2x plus 4, okay, let's see, um, this one's tricky, huh? x squared divided by 2x. What is x squared divided by 2x? If you simplify that, that is going to be 1 over 2x, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's going to be 1 over 2x. So I will have 1 over 2x up here and I need to multiply this half x to these two terms and write it under. This is long division from section 2.3. Okay, Take half of 2x, that is going to be 1x, 
Okay, so I'll have x squared right there because I'm doing 2x times half x, guys. That's what I just did. 2 times half is 1. x times x is x squared. That's how I got the x squared down here. Okay, let's keep going. How about I take 4 times, 4 times half x. If I multiply that, I will get plus 2x, right? The review of long division, guys. And then you subtract these two lines. x squared minus x squared is 0. 10x minus 2x is 8x. And I bring down the 4. And I now need to divide 8x by 2x. Okay? What is 8x divided by 2x? 8 divided by 2 is 4. x divided by x is just 1. So positive 1, I put plus 4 right there. Now what I need to do is I need to multiply this 4 to these two. But you know what? We're done. We found the, four, uh, the slant asymptote already. When you do the slant asymptote, we just don't care about the remainder. But you know, it's a nice practice. Why don't we finish this division? Okay, let's finish this division. So 2x times 4. 2x times 4 is 8x. 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, and then I must subtract vertically. Oopsies. If I subtract, I will get the remainder of negative 12. Not that we care about, because the slant asymptote is the quotient. Okay, um, we found the slant asymptote. Ta-da, this is it. Let me go ahead and write this down. We have a slant asymptote is y equals half x plus 4. And let us graph that, okay? I'm going to use the rise over run, okay? So I will plot 4 on the y-axis first, okay? That's the y-intercept. So plot 4 on the y-axis. And looking at the slope of half, okay? Go up 1, over 2 to the right. So just a review of graphing a linear function. So from that point right here, I'll go up 1, over 2 to the right. So I will have a new point at right here. And I can follow that pattern and plot a whole bunch of points, but I want you to know that this is not the rational function. This is just the slant asymptote. So I'm going to go ahead and use a highlighter to draw a dotted line. Okay, dotted line. This is not the actual function. This is just a guideline. That's what asymptotes are. If you have these asymptotes, we should be able to fit the graph um, in these intervals, okay? Now, we're ready to plot some points. I need two points to the right of x equals negative 2, okay, the red line. And I need two points to the left of that line. So let's go ahead and plug in some fun numbers. I may copy this. I may copy this down here so that I can use the... Guys, I may need some room over here. I need some room. So how about I add another page, okay? Hold on. I'm going to add another page. So adding another page after this. Okay, I got the extra page added. So the function was this, and I need my xy table. X and y. All right. What are some x values that we should plug in? Let's go check it out. Remember, the vertical asymptote was at negative 2, so it will be nice to have two points to the right and two points to the left of it. I'll plug in 2 and 0 and 2, just being random. I'll do 0 and 2. 0 and 2. I'm going to plug in 0 and 2, one at a time, right? So if I plug in 0, I'll get 0 squared plus 10 times 0 plus 4 for the numerator. And the bottom of the fraction is 2 times 0 
plus 4. I knew if I plug in 0, it will be easier because like a lot of things will turn into 0. So that is 4 divided by 4, which is 1. I will have a point at 0, 1. I'll have that pl a point plotted soon. Let me plug in 2. I hope it's nice though, guys. 2 squared plus 10 times 2 plus 4. And I'm dividing that by 2 times 2 plus 4, which is 4 plus 20 plus 4 on the numerator. The bottom of the fraction is 4 plus 4. So let me simplify this. Numerator is 28. The denominator is 8. Ugh, it's not going to be a nice number. But if I try to plot this or simplify this, uh, this will be 16, no, 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 14 over 6. Oh, shoot, guys, I'm sorry, I almost said the bad word. So if I go in, I, I'm having an issue. So 28 over 8, what's that in simplified fraction? Oh, I'm not wrong, it's just not simplified all the way. This is 7 over 2. And hooray to me because this is something I can plot. Please on your Alex, make your Alex to plot the fraction, the exact fraction. But the only reason I'm converting this into a decimal is because I don't have Alex to graph these for me. I need to plot it myself. And I need to know what 7 over 2 looks like. And half of 7 is by, what, 3.5? So I will plot those two points right now. So half, a 0, 1 first. 0, 1. Here's my first point. Next one. 2, 3.5. 2 to the right, 3.5 is up there. Okay, it's going to be a little awkward shape, but take a look. As the graph travels to the right, it's going to try to follow that slant asymptote. And to the left, it's going to get really, really close to that vertical asymptote, but it's going to go straight down. So that's what we got to the left side of the red line. I now need to pick a couple points to the left of x equals negative 2 x equals negative 2 is right here. So what are some good numbers that we can plug in? Maybe negative 4 and negative 6. I'll use negative 4 and negative 6. But it doesn't matter what you pick as long as you pick two numbers to the right and two numbers to the left of your vertical asymptote. I'm going to pick negative 4 and negative 6. Okay, if I do that, negative 4 and negative 6. Oh, I lost my function. Um, so if I plug in negative 4, it will be negative 4 squared plus 10 times negative 4 plus 4 all over 2 times negative 4 plus 4. And I'm thinking, why am I doing this by hand? I'm going to grab a scientific calculator that you guys don't see because it's on my hand. I'm going to go ahead and type this in. Negative 4 squared plus 10 times negative 4 plus 4 is the numerator and the denominator I'm literally just typing this entire thing in my scientific and that got me 5 hooray it's a beautiful point let's plot negative 4 5 but let me do one more I'll do negative 6 squared plus 10 times negative 6 plus 4 all over 2 times negative 6 plus 4, and I will type this fraction into my calculator and see what the y value is. And since I already typed this in my calculator, I'm just going, I copy the line above and I'm just changing the 4s to 6. And what I got is 5 over 2. Okay, so I'll plot negative 6, 5 over 2. But because I want to plot the decimal of it, because I want to know what that is, half of 2, half of 5 is 2.5. So I'll plot that point. So let me go up and plot negative 4, 4 and 5 and negative 6, 2.5. Those are going to be my two points. Negative 4, 5 first. 4 to the left of 5. Here's my first point. Next one. What was it? Negative 6, 2.5. Negative 6, 
2.5 is in between 2 and 3. All right, I got those two plotted. Now I have enough information. I'm going to go ahead and sketch a curve. Uh, as we are going to the left, this is going to follow that gray slant asymptote. As we are going to the right, this is going to go really, really close to that vertical asymptote, but it's never going to touch it or cross it. So this is how you can graph this function, guys. And if I were you, you know how Alex could be. You want to make sure that your third problem is right. I will graph this on the Desmo Scientific Calculator real quick. Just want to see if we got this right, okay? I know you have this on your paper. So first, the function was y equals x squared plus 10x plus 4. The denominator function is 2x plus 4. Now, I can't really see the whole thing, and it looks like what I did by hand, but I want to see if my asymptotes are all good. The vertical asymptote was x equals negative 2, and if I graph it with the dotted line, I can see the graph is doing exactly what it needs to. Like, as it's getting close to the vertical asymptote, it's going up or it's decreasing without bound. So the vertical asymptote looks good. And remember, our slant asymptote that we found by division is half x plus 4, right? So if I graph that with the dotted line, is my graph following that to the right? Yes, it is. And to the left, it is. So definitely uh, graph your function to make sure that you graphed it Right, I, I think that's a great idea. So check it with their Desmo Scientific Calculator. But notice how this looks exactly like what we got by hand. So I feel very proud. All right, come back and check out the other two or two or three examples on graphing rational functions soon.